Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com, and today I'm in Newark, New Jersey. I'm getting ready for a flight to Munich, Germany. I'm going to be in Munich for about 24 hours, and that sounds bizarre, but there are two, I think, really good reasons for it. Number one, you see, I have a friend of mine who's a pilot for United Airlines. I've decided to tag on to one of his trips and see what that schedule is like flying across the Atlantic, you know, twice in the course of such a short period of time. And the second and more important reason is my girlfriend is flying back from a couple weeks in Europe, and I wanted to snag a seat next to her for the return. Um, she's kind of important to this channel, too, because she's our creative director. Basically, any of the good ideas for videos on this channel have come from her. So let's check out the Polaris Lounge while I kill a few hours before it's time to head off to Munich. United pilots are required to check in one and a half hours before an international departure. Our flight deck crew today would be made up of three pilots, a captain, a first officer, and an international relief officer. Now, I love airports so much, I checked in much earlier than they did. So I headed to the Polaris Lounge at Newark, one of the most beautiful in the United States. There's great food, plenty of seating, and even a nap room, which I took advantage of. In fact, while I rest, why don't you head back to the studio to hear a little bit more about the sponsor of today's video. Today, it's harder than ever to stay on top of reading. Now, for really my whole life, reading has always been a passion of mine. And ever since starting this YouTube channel and having a full-time job as well, I've really lost the ability or the time, I guess, to read as much as I used to. Fortunately, I've discovered a new app called Blinkist. It's the only app in the world that takes the key takeaways, the insights, the wisdom from all kinds of nonfiction books and boils them down into 15-minute segments uh, that, that I can read or listen to. And I, it's really been a game changer for me. It's wonderful to be back plugged in to what's going on in the nonfiction book world in ways that just fit my lifestyle better. Uh, here's the app, it's super intuitive, very easy to use, and uh, really, uh, really simple. I've really gotten into this, um, a couple of, of books that, that helped me in my full-time job uh, in, in pretty, pretty powerful ways, but also in this YouTube world. I absolutely love the latest one I found called The Courage to Be Disliked. It's been great in terms of building my confidence despite some occasional negative feedback I get here on YouTube. Uh, it's really um, brought some clarity to me, uh, but it's one of many uh, on, the, on the app. So I highly recommend that you take a look. The first 100 people who go to my link, which is right here, and download Blinkist will get one week for free. You'll also get 25% off the full membership. This is a killer deal and I certainly hope you'll take advantage of it. The seven day trial is completely free and you can cancel any time you want. Please click this link in order to take advantage of that offer. My friend flies 757s and 767s for United. And after that nap, I watched this 767-400 taxi in. Quite a machine. Tonight's flight would be operated by one of these. So hopefully by this point you realize this is not a traditional uh, trip report. This is gonna be something a little different. Uh, I'm gonna have fun doing it and I hope you're gonna have fun following along. So I'm uh, riding in the cruise shuttle to the hotel, staying in the crew hotel, basically keeping the cruise schedule. Now it's time to get boarded up. Let's go. When I arrived at the gate, it was clear this would be pretty much a full flight. But soon, I was on board in this unusual business class cabin. Thankfully, United are in the process of upgrading these. I'd booked seat 1D, one of the most unique in the sky. It's similar to the one the pilots use for their rest during the flight. They're in 7D and surrounded by a curtain for added privacy. I won't do everything the pilots do. Cheers. This 212 configuration is certainly unique, and while as a solo traveler it was nice not to have a seatmate, I did feel a bit exposed. I'm glad United are upgrading these cabins. Just a few moments, I'll be putting on a safety video highlighting the features of this 767. We know the may you fly frequently. Please give us a couple minutes of your undivided attention. Thank you. About 25 minutes after the door closed, we were leaving U.S. soil behind on our way to Germany. This was going to be a whirlwind of a trip. I'll keep track of the time in Newark and in Munich as we proceed. Shortly after takeoff, flight attendants began a meal service. I chose the Thai-style coconut ginger broth with udon noodles. The pilots also get a business class meal. In addition to whatever's on offer for passengers, 
They can choose to pre-order a Hindi meal, a vegetarian one, something low-fat, fish, salad, or even gluten-free. Oh, and contrary to what you may have heard, the pilots don't have to eat different things. About two and a half hours into the trip, it was time for me to take a nap. Pilots get breaks based on flight time. Take this flight, for example. It took about seven hours and 15 minutes to get to Munich. All three pilots are on the flight deck for the first 30 minutes or so, and also for about the last 45 minutes before landing. That leaves six hours shared among three pilots. So that means each pilot got a two-hour break on this flight. Now, I admittedly took a longer break than our crew. I slept for three and a half hours and woke up mostly due to the exposure of this seat. If I'd had their curtain, I'm not sure I could wake up after only two hours of rest. Breakfast came with about an hour to touchdown. And with about eight hours of the 43-hour trip behind us, we were on the ground in Munich. It was a quick trip through customs. We hopped on the crew van, and soon we were downtown. It's 9 o'clock in the morning here in Munich. Uh, everybody's gone to take a nap. Uh, we're talking about getting together again in a little bit, maybe exploring the city a little bit, uh, and then it'll be time to go. I mean, you know, we're here less than 24 hours. Uh, it's time to fly out. So um, I'm feeling a little bit uh, a little bit tired, so I'm going to take a nap myself, uh, but I'll catch up with you in a little bit when we go out and, and explore the cities. That's much better, uh, much, much better. Uh, look, this is not the normal schedule that I'd recommend or I'd use if I were trying to adjust to European work trip or something like that. If that were the case, I'd just power through and stay awake and, and get, on, get on local time, but I don't really want to do that. I'm only here 24 hours, so I'm kind of staying on local time, which is, which is what the, the crew seems to be doing as well. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna explore a little bit and uh, see, what, uh, see what Munich has to offer. way around it. I was tired. Only solution? Espresso. Okay, that was a really fun day. Uh, hanging out with pilots is pretty cool, especially when you're an aviation enthusiast like me. Uh, we had a lot of fun just kind of joking and laughing and talking travel. Uh, but now it's time for bed. It's about uh, 7.15 or so, um, but the uh, we're supposed to be in the crew van uh, at 7.15 tomorrow morning. So uh, anyway, uh, it's time for some sleep. It's 1.30 in the morning and I am wide awake. Yeah, I don't know how they do this schedule. I mean, I, I'm used to like adjusting pretty quickly, but there was really no reason to do that. I just slept when I was tired <laughs> and um, now I'm not, but I still have five hours and 15 minutes until the crew van. I don't know how these guys do it. I guess this is the closest I've come to actually vlogging on this channel, and that to me is just talking about whatever you're thinking about. And what I'm thinking about right now is food. Okay, so I just ordered a club sandwich. Dinner is served. Is it dinner? Sure enough, back to sleep for a little bit. Um, time to shower. Okay, so after the shower, Feeling pretty good. Um, that was not the best night's sleep, the most thorough or complete night's sleep I've ever had. Uh, the real question is what happens midway across the Atlantic. And soon the crew van arrived, we were on board, and ready to head back to the airport. Artfully decorated, the crew van was on its way in no time. Kind of crazy to realize this exact same thing happens every single day in cities all over the planet for practically every airline that flies to them. Fun ride in the uh, in the crew van there. That was a good time. Um, and uh, getting through security after a good shawarma, which apparently is a must do in the Munich airport. Highly recommend it. Mine was delicious while waiting in another security line. But uh, it's time to get through this thing. Let's get on board. My seat on the return leg was a more traditional window. And your creative director was in the aisle. And we are off. It is 9.20. Uh, two local time, about eight and a half hours in the air uh, before we're back. Uh, this has been fascinating so far. I'm sure the flights can be great. Lunch on the trip back across the pond was
suddenly it all caught up with me again, and it was time for another nap. As I fell asleep, I thought about how truly impressive it is that pilots and flight attendants maintain these schedules. I was beat, but they do it all of the time. Please don't forget to say thank you next time you run into one of these professionals. I woke up just as we were crossing the Canadian border. And in time for one more meal, plenty of carbs on this trip. sharing a lot more like this with you between now and the next time though see you in the sky